this is going to be our quarterly report covering the fourth quarter of 17. I actually have a few copies. Thank you. So much so, I didn't know we were no. handing this out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for any of the spelling errors up front. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think some of them, most. All right. Um, some of you know the department's really busy. The department's also in transition. Um, in December, Frank Swift retired on the 19th. Mark Richardson retired December 22nd. Charlie Butchock retired December 29th. Um, as yet, we have one of those three positions is um, going to be filled later this week, uh, that, that being the highway foreman position, and uh, we've identified somebody that uh, is interested and would want to move into Mark Richardson's former position at the transfer station. We also uh, had a summer hire that went back to school, Bill Murray. He's actually um, Bill Bowley's nephew. Um, so it was good to see somebody else in the community. Uh, we've put on Susan Thrumstum. She was up, worked upstairs in assessing. She's now our administrative assistant, uh, took Marie's uh, former position. And Marie has uh, moved into uh, the ops coordinator position that used to be held by Teresa. Uh, John, uh, the, our other hire was John Anzalone. He's a Hampton resident. Uh, John started with us on December 13th, um, very nice background, experienced background, uh, looking forward to what he's going to bring to the department. Uh, we are in the process, of, we have interviews scheduled for later this week and next week trying to fill the four laborer vacancies that we have. It's been, uh, it's been a struggle, uh, it takes time. Um, especially given the, the budget season and getting the Warren articles uh, prepared. It was uh, it's tough to get it all done. We did make internal transfers. Uh, one of our highway laborers, Steve Vitale, has also has gone over to his, operate at the transfer station. And Dan Coughlin, who uh, many people remember from the scale house, is now the uh, lead operator for the facility. Um, let's see. And I'm not going by this verbatim, by the way. As Jennifer says, you'll add lid nice in. <laughs> um, why don't you go over the major projects? Uh, many of the major projects that we have going, uh, we finished up uh, with the design drawings and submittals for all the permitting for Mill Pond Dam. Uh, that actually went out to bid, came back in. Uh, as many of you are fully aware, that is a warrant article uh, for the additional funding that we uh, would need to uh, authorize the bid to move forward uh, if the board chooses to do so and uh, pending that and a few comments here or there that project is shovel ready uh, ready to move forward uh, the seawall at Bicentennial Park those uh, drawings are ready for bid as well that's a project that we'll put out to bid after it goes through one more legal review uh, this spring summer uh, we'll have that all bidded and shovel ready uh, in the event to move that forward uh, for the seawall replacement. We were uh, very fortunate over the last few weeks to get all our asset management software installed on uh, new tablets. This is uh, one of the most exciting things that I've done since I've been here. I know that sounds a little bit silly, but uh, it is really going to help our department not only track service calls and work orders from uh, responding to all our residents and businesses, but internally help us use it as uh, risk management software, being able to know what we have for assets, know their lifespan, know what needs to be replaced, figure out the priority in which uh, items need to be replaced, really use it as a way to help uh, manage all the infrastructure that we already have going. Uh, as many of you know, we installed the flashing crosswalk up by uh, the hotel in Logan's Run that seems uh, to be, gets used, um, and its blinking lights certainly uh, provide warning for all the motorists uh, going through that area. We have already installed uh, the bases for um, 
the next set, which will go by Fast Studies and Galley Hatch. Uh, we're just waiting. It needs to be wired up with the electrician and put the tops on. Something will get done as soon as we're done uh, with our winter plowing season. Um, as many of you know, and hopefully those at home, our department has spent a lot of time in the last few months really understanding the needs of our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the facility studies came in. We had presentations to this board, the planning board, uh, the budget committee. Uh, we've done uh, some mailers to make sure our residents are all educated on the wastewater treatment process and the needs that we have. Uh, we've done videos and we posted episode one and episode two will probably debut later this week um, to really wrap our hands around and be able to explain to everybody uh, the needs that we have. Uh, again, another Warren article that will be out there. Uh, for the improvements uh, in March for the wastewater treatment plant. So uh, a lot of time over the last few months has been um, working through those details. The Lafayette Road sewer replacement project will begin back up this spring. It has been dormant with the exception we did have our contractor out there last week uh, cutting away a portion of the roadway and resurfacing it. Um, the heavy freeze cycles that we've had uh, and then the nice warm weather that seems to follow right after it uh, has created quite some havoc on our trenches. Um, that is not all just settling. That is freeze-thaw. We have a lot of trenches, not just on Lafayette Road, but in other places around town, you're seeing the potholes. Uh, it's pothole season. Uh, so if you do see one, we do ask that people call it in. Uh, we do take it uh, very seriously. We make sure we have a plan in place. Uh, so we can't be everywhere at the same time, so we do appreciate the calls that actually come in. and. Mm -hmm let us know where one is occurring. Um, and with the Lafayette Road one, uh, that will start back up this spring. Um, for the end of the year, summations for our two biggest operations, wastewater treatment and uh, refuse collection, transportation. Um, overall, the wastewater uh, treatment plant uh, handled uh, 76.3 million gallons over uh, 2016. Um, that isn't a what I would consider a significant number when you take in terms that we, you know, some years treat 950, close to a thousand gallons, or 1,000 million gallons. So um, it is. Uh, it also fluctuates year to year given the amount of uh, groundwater that we have, the amount of infiltration we see in the system things of that nature. Um, I did want to point out, though, that the um, the amount of wet sludge was also uh, as part of the whole process, and it comes with the dewatering uh, end of things. Uh, we did transport 145 tons less of sludge to the, to the uh, waste management up in uh, Rochester. That equates to a huge savings to the town because we pay about ninety dollars a ton to get rid of it um, so that's uh, some expensive uh, waste from that plant to get rid of uh, partially the reason why that number is down it goes to the efficiency of how the staff are running the plant uh, the dewatering press that we paid for a couple of years ago working very well uh, we get a much drier cake if you will or pro product that we transport up there therefore um, we're not paying for water that's the, the in layman's terms. Transfer station. Uh, we've been able to summarize the December numbers. Uh, for 2017, we're 56 tons higher than we were in 16. Uh, we transported or processed 6,585 tons. Um, recycling was 150 tons higher than in 16. Um, and I even looked at the recycling rate, uh, it remained flat at 30%. It has been 30% for the last um, five, 10 years, easy. Um, so I don't have any real good crystal ball answer as to why the 150 more tons of recycling didn't up the recycling um, rate, but it didn't. Um, it's good to see that the number's remaining high, but um, I still hope or wish that we could do better with respect to that, just from an operational perspective and a cost perspective. Um, going into the new year, I've asked the staff to make 
some changes um, of how we report solid waste. So I hope that by the next quarter when I come to you, we're also looking at things like um, how many metals we're recycling, things of that nature. Because overall, I think that needs to be included in this information that, that I give back to the board as to, because solid waste is a big picture. If you remember back in the 70s, we threw everything in the landfill, metal, uh, leaf and garden waste, uh, that's all separated now. So um, I think it's time for a, a revisit as to how we look at those numbers and how we look at our operation over there. That's all that I that I have for you tonight. Here you go. Um, one question on the so you said that the that the trash is 4.7 percent increase, but the recycling is only one percent increase since we got the new bins. Yeah. Um, or the additional bins, I should say. Yeah, when we um, started with the carts back in 2011, we ordered just under a shade under 10,000 carts, but each year we've ordered several hundred. And now we have close to 15,000 carts out there. So the more carts hasn't really resulted in a greater percentage of, re of, of recycling. Right. But, um, still, but the number of carts, I think, are doing their job and that it's given the people the ability to recycle. Um, but how much more and how much more we can do to get them to recycle more is something I'm struggling with. Because recycling is very beneficial to the cost of the town, right? To the tune of about $25 a ton. I looked at it last year, and if you take transportation and tipping into account, it costs us about $155 a ton to get rid of waste, uh, refuse. It costs us about $125 or $24 to get rid of recycling. Why? And, and you one of the questions that's going to come out of this is I thought we didn't pay anything for recycling. Well, we don't pay a tipping fee on the floor, but it still costs money to drive it down to Bill and Rick a mass. So we don't have to process it. Correct. Right. So they'll, they accept it for free, but we still have transportation costs. And those transportation costs divided over what we generate, um, we save about 25 a ton. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you, you said you have four new workers. For, for we have the, four uh, openings. Highway, for right. highway. And you, you're working on those this week? We have yeah, three we have or four to. interviews already scheduled between Friday and next Tuesday. Excellent. Storm coverage. You guys did a pretty good job over the past couple of months. Were there any uh, unforeseen I don't problems? know if it's unforeseen. I, I do sort of want to give a shout-out. Uh, Toby Spinauer actually stepped up to the plate and has taken over. They... Snow operations, and I call the middle of the night, um, just because of his experience there mm -hmm. and with our foreman, you know, Russ and Al, you know, putting it all together. I mean, these guys know their routines, know how to do it. And with Frank's departure, it sort of left a, you know, a hole there for that who's getting the call at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Um, all the guys have really come together and, you know, picked up where they left off. And those four laborers, you know, that's the shortage is, is part of that. You know, one person gets sick, it's move one person from one truck to another truck, get in a different truck. Um, you really need, you know, we had a guy last storm had to do one of the beach routes that, you know, he's just never done before. The guy who does the beach route's always done the beach route. Um, was, and the flu is really impacting our <clears throat> ability to react, too. So. Well, I know I had uh, one, one person that contacted me, and I, I talked to you about that earlier on. And in this last storm, she was very appreciative of the driver that came down there. Uh, took care of her, yep. got out and actually talked to her and, and stuff like that. So that, that was really good. So it's good to see that you guys and your workers are out there doing that. We're flexible. We, we hear concerns and, and take them to heart and react to them. Absolutely. The website needs to be updated a little uh -oh. bit. So what did just, I forget? No, well, well, you still have Frank in there and, and, and oh, stuff yes. like that. So that, that stuff just has to be done. Will other, do. Other than that, a good report. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? No, thank you. Very informative. Okay. Thank you both. Nothing more, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Recycling. Yep. 
I mean, I, I know that they've tried and tried and tried to re increase it and stuff and get people to recycle more. I think the key is summer recycling because we see the percentages. We actually dip low during the summer when you look at the volumes. We produce more trash and, and, and as a balanced scale, less recycling. S instead of asking our full-time residents to recycle more because they've been doing it very diligently and are always hitting that 30%, it's, I think we need to provide, figure out a way to provide and make it easier for our summer visitors to recycle. I don't know if it means more like bottle receptacles down at the beach or it means, you know, more cardboard recycling for pizza boxes. I don't really, haven't got a firm grasp on that yet. But when you definitely look at the numbers, it, we get thrown off during those 13 weeks of the year. Otherwise, we... Um, we, we are really consistent. We're really good. We're not a, we're not a, a, I want to say a slacker community by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to recycling. Matter of fact, when we were going up to uh, Portland or South Portland for that particular facility, we were not their highest, but we were their second highest community by volume of waste that for percentage of recycling. They were really impressed with how much we do actually recycle. So we do a great job that way, but I think it's trying to get our summer visitors um, to recycle more or, or for us to give them the opportunity to recycle more. So that's, that's really where it's got to go next. Okay. Anything else on the pipes, the AL, or is that just staying? A flurry of emails today. Um, I sent a letter last Friday um, stating under this uh, administrative order 18001, um, which says either put in flow meters or repair the force mains. Uh, I agreed after much discussion with your side of the board. Uh, we submitted a letter that basically says we agree to put in force flow monitoring. We've identified some locations on, on the plant side where we could reasonably do this uh, within the budget that I have. Um, Sent that to them on Friday, they noted, or Thursday, they noted they received it. Electronically, I got a copy of a letter that they sent us back uh, dated the 9th. I don't think the paper copies have caught up with us yet. That basically says they recognize it and they're waiting for us to produce the design or what we're actually going to do by April 30th. Um, and that's where it stands. We did ask today. I did ask on behalf of the town to extend our appeal period out to April 30th. I had that literally went out at four, so it's it's literally changing okay. by the minute. It's All a right. hot subject. Thank you for your report. That's yeah. good. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, <clears throat> I just want to say, you know, when I just went on my visit um, all through Asia, they recycle everywhere. Every hotel recycles. And they, there's just no question that you recycle. They recycle on the streets. You know, part of the problem is, and I brought this up at the Hampton Area Commission this last time, <coughs> is the trash down there. Why would people recycle when they throw the trash all over the streets? And it's really long overdue that they, something be done about the trash, that people shouldn't just be able to throw it. I've gone to these little backwater towns in Vietnam. They don't do it. Mm -hmm. Why do they do it in Hampton Beach? They don't do it in Agunquit. They mm -hmm. don't do it in uh, Old Orchard Beach, but they do it in Hampton Beach. It makes no sense. It's just because people allow it. And something needs to be done about it. And I brought this up to Nancy Stiles, and I'm hoping that she'll take this on as a project because it makes no sense. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world like it happens in Hampton Beach. Today, one of my customers mentioned it. Well, they came down and said, oh, I never go down here. I can't stand how people throw stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's a businesswoman that is in business right up here in town, and that's her impression of Hampton Beach. It makes no sense why we allow it. And I know that this board has worked, and they're, you know, I believe they... Uh, there was a time when they were trying to get fining power or whatever, and that was just blown off somewhere along the line. And I know Nancy Stiles worked on it, but I think it's something that we have to take a, another look at. It's just they don't allow it anywhere. Why is it happening here? 
I would agree with your Point. assessment. Anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.